Today we're testing star sizes and shapes in images taken through our William Optics Cat91 WIFD telescope. I'm Boyd Edwards. And I'm Ren Edwards. Let's talk sensor sensibility. We bought our Cat91 with our own money and received it a couple of weeks ago. William Optics is not sponsoring this video, nor do they have any say about its contents. Last spring, we bought a ZWO ASI 6200mm Pro full-frame camera because it offers a wide field of view and a wealth of detail with 61 megapixels and small 3.76 micron pixels. This camera pairs well with our Celestron Edge HD 9.25 Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. But we also want to pair it with a fast small to medium focal length refractor that fully supports this sensor and won't completely break the bank. This, as it turns out, is a tall order. The smaller the focal ratio, the more high quality lens elements are needed to produce refractor images that are sharp, undistorted, and color corrected out to the corners of a full frame sensor. We bought a William Optics Cat 71 WIFD in the spring of 2024 and have produced some beautiful images with it on our full frame camera. But all is not well when you zoom in on details of, of our Cat 71 images. Here's a single unprocessed five minute luminance frame of the Cocoon Nebula taken with the Cat 71 and the ASI 6200mm Pro. This frame looks great at this scale, but zoom in on these nine squares and place them in a three by three array and you get what's known as an aberration inspector image. This one was produced using the image inspector tool in the free program ASTAP, which is linked in the description below. Although the stars are round in the central square, they are distorted in all four corner squares, especially in the upper right square, where they look like little birdies flying away from the center. Like they're afraid of the cat? Yeah, poor things. <laughs> in fact, these little birdies resemble aberrations in CAT 71 spot diagrams at the corners of a full frame sensor that we discussed in our CAT 91 first look video, which is linked in the description below. Yeah, these distortions can complicate post-processing because star extermination routines can mistake these stars for non-stellar objects like little galaxies. We found that PixInsight Blur Exterminator Correct Only fixes most of the stars, but when we run Star Exterminator, some of the misshapen stars remain in the starless image, which can lead to issues in the final image. The tiny round spots in spot diagrams for the CAT 91 piqued our interest in this telescope, so we bought one. Nice spots are great, but can this cat purr? In a big way. Here's an unprocessed stack of five 10 second luminance frames of a rich star field that includes Alberio in the lower right corner. Taken through the Cat 91 and ASI 6200mm Pro. And here's the corresponding aberration inspector image, which is absolutely flawless. Just look at how round the stars are in the corners. I don't ever recall seeing a full frame aberration inspector image that looks this good. That's impressive, but I would love to see two images of the same target taken through both the Cat 71 and the Cat 91 so I can compare whiskers to whiskers. I'm glad you asked. Here's a raw, unprocessed, five minute luminance image of the Andromeda Galaxy taken through the Cat 91 ASI 6200 mm Pro combination. This one right here, which has a generous 4.6 degree by 3.1 degree field of view, complete with some uncorrected background gradients from the 79% illuminated moon that night. And here's a five minute luminance image of the same target, taken through the CAT 71 ASI 6200mm Pro combination, which spreads those 61 megapixels 
of the camera over a larger field of view. It looks like the stars in the CAT91 image are smaller than the stars in the CAT71 image. To be sure, can we zoom in on the region in the white, white rectangle? You bet. Here's the rectangle through the CAT91 and the same rectangle through the CAT71. The greatest challenge for telescope optics is to produce round stars at the sensor corners. And this rectangle is at the very corner of the ASI 6200 sensor for the CAT91, whereas it is well inside this corner for the CAT71. My goodness, the CAT91 stars are clean, round, and small, right up to the corners of the sensor, while the CAT71 stars are blobby, bird-shaped, and large, even well away from the corners. Yep, the big cat can purr. It's perfect. <laughs> can I see the comparison one more time? You bet. Here's the rectangle on the CAT71, and here it is on the 91. For us, it's worth $2,600 for a 90 mm, 91 millimeter refractor and $3,400 for a full frame camera to get such sharp details. Name into that. It might not be right for everyone, but it's perfect for folks like us who like to push telescope optics to their limits and coax as much detail from each image as possible. All of the CAT91 images in this video are monochrome. When do we get to shoot and process our first finished full color image through the CAT91? Great question. The images shared in this video were taken a few days ago during a break in the clouds. When the sky clears up again, we'll take some real images through our color and narrowband filters. And we'll bring all y'all along for the ride. In conclusion, we couldn't be happier with the results of our full frame tests of the CAT91, which also passed ASTAP tilt analysis and star roundness tests with flying colors. And we're excited to get some real images with it. This scope is a dream come true for us. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.